and welcome back rally fans to day two of the safari rally and what a rally it is this is a marathon and not a spin despite let's be fair calais roven Pira absolutely dominating the event so far as you can see in the re in the results here pretty much so we've got roven Pira so far one hour 16 minutes 22.6 seconds evans 56.9 seconds behind um it's really close between the uh, second and third and pretty much everyone else in the top five but well the top four let's say but cali um so second third and fourth um katsuta one minute and eight seconds behind um terry neuville one minute seven seconds behind and then you've got Formo, an extra 1 minute 46. And Gregor Monster, 3 minutes 34. There has been massive issues, though, for the Toyota team, which we will no doubt be getting in, into pretty much our winners and losers. And let's be fair, our first loser, and I don't really think it's their fault, but Mr. Tannock. Oh, what were you thinking when you went over that big rock that you probably couldn't have seen? Um, yeah, went over a big rock, had a moment, out the rally. Yeah, it's not good at all, is it? I mean, wow. And to be fair, at the time, yes, it is a marathon, not a sprint. Hyundai, Hyundai, or Hyundai, were doing really, really well. They were looking like they were winning. I was kind of getting, feeling a bit sorry for Toyota. But, so to speak, yeah, big puncture, big miss, massive, massive hammer, I think, to his championship chances. They're not over. But let's just say ice skating uphill may well be slightly easier for Mr. Tannock. And Mr. Lappy as well, the winner of Sweden. Oh, um, we believe what gearbox problems. And we'll get into the stories in a bit. But I felt relatively sorry for him. Yeah, poor guy. I mean, nothing he could have done about that. That wasn't even his driving. It just, it just went. But talking about driving... The man absolutely dominating the safari. This man here, Calais Rovenpira, doing absolute gangbusters, leading by over a minute, which you'd think is a lot. But in we've learned in the safari rally, you kind of have to either divide it by two or divide it by three. So really, apparently, it's either 20 or 30 seconds, which is not much, because tomorrow is going to be a massive day. However, you have to wonder, Mr. Rovenpera surely now is the favourite at the moment going into Saturday and going into Sunday. Once again, the biggest day is going is going to be that Saturday. So fingers crossed. And I mean, there we go. As you can see here, the headlines, unstoppable, unstoppable Rovenpera tops the top three is in Kenny. He dominated Fridays and he's he, he done well. Yeah, it was good on, good on Thursday for that one stage. Um, but yeah, um, no one can hold can hold a candle to him at the moment, sadly. And one of the reasons why is all the gearbox issues um, caused um, by high, you know, by Hyundai. They've basically been saying um, and on dirtfish.com uh, that... The direct, a technical director um, wants to ensure that Tori Neuville makes it to the finish of the Safari Kenya because the Hyundai dive drivers have been told to slow down to save their transmission. So as we know, their chances of ending Toyota's dominant, dominant run of the Safari Rally Kenya looked quite good at the beginning, but now pretty much spoiled by transmission issues. And it's uh, Thierry Neuville, who's the only man really um, in with a shout of beating a Toyota, a Toyota driver. But if today's anything to go by, anything can happen tomorrow. Now, talking to Dirtfish, follow us, following this Lappy's gearbox explosion, which he suffered while running on that Friday afternoon, um, he said, uh, the uh, ten, I think it's the technical director, he said, the casing exploded. We know the transmission is the weak point of this car. The car is a lot better than last year. But it's not been developed and validated properly. Last year, they were saying, was the prop shaft. Um, and now it's the transmission. I remember Chris um, even uh, what, on the WhatsApp saying he thought it was the prop shaft, but it ended up being the transmission. I wasn't going to argue with him at the time, though. He had more information than me on last year. Now, with the current rules and the number of jokers, we're a bit stuck. That's the situation, he said. Now, asked if there were any concerns on the sister car of Tori Neuville, the world championship leader. He added, yes, for sure. It's a risk. It's really difficult to put a number number on it, but it's a risk. All they can do is drive at 80%, which is not what we want to do. We'll have to compromise the bit, uh, the performance, and not to be 100% everywhere. The only saving grace in this rally is I don't think anyone is 100%, 100% of the time, like you would in some other rallies. Once again, it's the closest thing they have 
I think I, I remember one of the commentators saying to a Dakar rally, which yeah, it's a really it's a bit hard to um, it's a bit a bit hard to argue. And Neuville, Dorian Terry Neuville revealed his MacGyver style WRC rally car repair. Fantastic stuff. Yeah, he described his roadside safari rally repair on his uh, Hyundai following a puncture as something not too dissimilar to the television program MacGyver. So he is the championship leader. So a massive news when that tyre went and he started to struggle. But he's come back, not, you know, not too bad. The Neuville pressed on in the hope of not to drop too much time before his tyre exploded in sight of the finish. The Belgian reached the stage end only losing 19.9 seconds. But the remains of the rubber had as you may have seen, ripped a massive hole in his um, in his Hyundai. Now, prior to that final stage, they pulled over on the road section to do a quick repair. Yeah, like we would at home, duct tape, <laughs> duct tape, solves everything. But this included a device to clean dust from the inside of the car using a tree branch and a cloth. How very technical! At the top, one of the top echelons of motorsport. Now, the pair were forced to wear goggles. Yep, yeah, they're not. They weren't going swimming. They weren't going. I mean, they weren't, they weren't going skiing or anything like that, but with their goggles, and this was to battle any dust that managed to creep inside the car. To be fair, in the cockpit view, albeit the camera does not capture everything, it didn't look too it didn't look too bad. But the duo, without hybrid power, reached the finish in sixth overall, 48 seconds behind leader Raven Pira at the time. Um, and they were saying that, unfortunately, the tyre exploded 150 metres before the finish and destroyed the whole bodywork. So for the last stage, we had to do some MacGyver stuff and survive in the dust. But in the end, it wasn't bad. Um, as bad as expected, they're saying. And in the end, we got through it no problem whatsoever. So that's pretty much, uh, you know, the, the main things on the day. Uh, Mr. Solberg is out, sadly, as well, in respect of... Um, in respect of WRC too, but his teammate uh, Guy Greensmith is doing gangbusters. It looked to be a really good fight between the two of them, but alas, um, yeah. So Roven Pira absolutely out in front. Uh, Evan second, Katsuta third. Can any can anyone catch Calais? Well, if you remember, he made that mistake in Sweden, so anything is absolutely possible. This has been the hot lap. Thank you very much. Stay tuned for more rally updates tomorrow. Speak to you soon.